Hey, guys. So we know Lando is a stylish guy, but we also now know from both Solo and Rise of Skywalker that he's essentially been wearing the same outfit for 50 years. So my question is, is he essentially wearing, like, 1970s capes in space present time? Or, like, fashion in our world is cyclical. Have we just only seen him during the times when his retro style happens to be back in trend in Return of the Jedi and then again in Rise of Skywalker. What do you guys think? Hello and welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I am Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. And I'm Ella Moran, the retailer hmm. from inside the same house as Pete the Retailer. Hmm. The call is coming from inside the house. That's true, it yeah. Is. Welcome back, Ella. It's been a little while since you've been on the show. It's been a very long time, mm. I, I think. Long time. Long. Um, well... Well, thanks for coming back. We're finishing out the action, the, as such as it is, the, the the scenes with people in them from Solo, a Star Wars story. And today we're talking about minute 126. 126. 126 starts with Lando reaching for something that isn't there, aren't we all? And it ends with uh, Han Solo asking Chewie when he's ever steered him wrong. Hmm. hmm. So, um... Yeah, so it starts out, Lando's reaching to, he's, he's looking to cheat again. But as we saw in the, the previous couple of minutes, Han gave him a, a, a um, voracious, no? A, 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 Im- a bracing. A, a big a bracing hug. bracing embrace. Yeah, that, in which he <laughs> actually took the card from his little card holder. And uh, so then... I'm a, little, it, I'm a little suspicious of that as a, like... Seems like if you're hugging someone, their arms are as far away from your hands as they could possibly be. Well, he, not as far away as they could possibly be, but he kind of grabbed his arm yeah. first. He gave him like a like a little a clasp in. and a pull in, and that oh, clasp sort of, I think turned like, it. Yeah, that kind and remember, of, yeah, he like grew up on the street, so he's probably like a pickpocket. Mm, that's probably a good point. Yeah, yeah. and Land, but Lando's device is super clunky. How would someone not see that thing? Right. He's wearing big baggy sleeves and it's literally, it's like a spider, you know, it's like Spider-Man's yeah, yeah. web shooter. It's like literally sticking like, out over his head. Like, like an ace of spades sticking out of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he very obviously keeps it below the table. I don't right. know if that hand comes above, I guess the hand does come above the table a couple of times. But. Well, I think he probably keeps it buttoned. He keeps his, you know, like this, he keeps his, his collar, his uh, cuff buttoned while he's playing yeah. maybe. Or, and then once he needs it, or when he thinks he's going to need it, he'll open it up a little bit and get, yeah, get it ready. I've played games with you guys before, mm-hmm. and this is a, this is a safe place. This is uh, there will be immunity here. Have you ever cheated at a game? Period. <laughs> or a, have you ever cheated in a game against me? And B, have mm-hmm. you ever cheated in a game? Period. I mean, I feel like you're opening up a can of worms here, Alex, because I think my Mm, definition of cheating and Pete's definition of cheating don't always overlap. (laughs) Please elaborate. (laughs) I don't think I've ever cheated at a game with you. But Ella likes to make up rules on the fly. Huh. Not true. Mm. Uh, But I I think in Scrabble, uh, there's some contention about like whether you can talk about how to spell words or whether you can like 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 how much table talk in Scrabble is appropriate. Oh, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Pete, your your feeling is you got to put it out there, and that's when you find out if it's playable or not. Not you can't check ahead of time or anything like that. No, and it's not like I'm looking in a dictionary ahead of time, no, I don't think. But you're just being like, what <laughs> but... about Splunk? Is Splunk a word? And like, <laughs> yeah. Splunk. Z-B. Splunk's yeah. a word, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Unless someone well, challenges it. Have you the... cheated in games against us? I can't recall. I don't think so. One thing I've learned, especially playing games uh, against my brother, who is very good at games, mm-hmm. is I'm not, I am much more, um, inclined to lose a game doing cool moves and stuff than mm. I am 
like winning isn't the thing. It's almost I enjoy more the mechanics of it more so than the actual winning. So right. Uh, and also, I would feel terrible if I got caught. And also, if I won, I wouldn't be like, yeah, I totally, you know, I guess I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, I got one over on those jerks, but but I wouldn't. Let uh, me let the record show. Mm-hmm. And but because again, it wasn't it wasn't a a it wasn't out of greed. It wasn't out of a desire to win. Mm-hmm. But you did cheat on Doug Loves Movies once. I did. Yeah. Well, I didn't call it cheating. I called no. that bluffing. Bluffing. There you go. Okay. Yeah. That's why I don't like poker. That's not cheating. <laughs> yeah. I mean, cheating would be if I looked up the answer somehow covertly and that, or I had a little earpiece in my ear and right. someone gave right, me right. the answer. Yes. But, <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Maybe but it's a coincidence, bluffed. but sure. That's why I did, I've never been on the show again, Since despite then, yeah, him you, you making repeated references to Portland. So maybe you're right. Maybe I, uh, little asterisk next mm-hmm. to my name, certainly at least that. <laughs> I'll, we'll blame it on that. Yeah. I think I screwed up because I was, uh, I think I haven't been invited back because I, I ran out before I was supposed to. I think he was going to do some kind of fake out that it was supposed to be Pete Davidson, but it was me or something like that. Oh. And I screwed up the instructions <laughs> beforehand and I came out and I wasn't, uh, I don't know. Mm. Also, I'm not a very good contestant on that. So who, who knows? You were cheating to get more stage time. Basically. I was cheating, yeah, to the audience. I was cheating <laughs> out. Like, <laughs> I was upstaging Wyshynski. Um, yes. But Wait, Alex, uh, have you ever cheated in a game not with us? I don't think so. Because uh, you're all about mechanics. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I I can't even. Th- I mean, I'm sure when I was a kid, I did. You know, mm-hmm. I had a. Oh, I, I definitely this, did as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I had this device that I would attach to my wrist, like when I play Monopoly, and I would pick up two bills <laughs> like, instead of one. It was. It was. Uh, I'm yeah, picturing that. Like Silo up the sleeve. Yeah, like a yeah. thing in your in your a thing up your wrist with a that's got like like the two purple dots from Candyland or something like that. Like, <laughs> like using it just to cheat at the most mundane, like yeah. like whatever you can, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Or like a wild draw four or something like that, being like, oh. Mm. Um, <laughs> I always travel around with all sorts of cards, depending on no matter what card game I'm going to play. I have like right. a Uno card. I have like a regular, I have an Ace of Spades. I have a, uh, you have a Magic Professor the Gathering Plum, you have a- Black Lotus card. I have all the cards ready to go. <laughs> Have you guys played? I was actually just looking yesterday uh, at a list, the uh, the like Wikipedia list of games uh, for which the rules are not disclosed when you Mm. begin the game. So, like, have you played Mao? No, with you, Uh, I don't even understand the concept of what (laughs) how you play a game where you don't even know the rules. Next time we we hang out in person, we have a thing. Don't explain it to him now. Yeah, I can't explain Uh it to you now. (laughs) The first rule of Mao is that. You mm-hmm. don't talk about the rules. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's funny that it's called Mao when Chairman Mao was famous for having a little book that had, you know, rules and sayings and stuff. Yeah. So it's weird. Well, that one one person needs to know how to play and oh. the rest have to figure it out as they go. Oh, I see. That's why it's called Mao. Because of right. uh, Yeah. Interesting. Well, so on a related matter. Mm-hmm. So Han Solo waits until the, how long was he holding on to this card that Lando had because it's not like this is the first didn't they play like a bunch of hands to get to this point yeah so was he holding on to it i guess until the millennium falcon was on the and he just knew well, that that card would be the one that would help them win that hand or that lando would no uh, that's, so that's the thing i i noticed this time around yeah. that han solo doesn't use that card to win mm-mm he just holds it out, be like, oh, it'd be nice if you had this and you could win, but I've got this. Like, he, Han Solo yeah. is playing honest here. And he says it, fair and square. Fair and square. Right. Yeah. Okay, so he, he so was just he, doing it because he knew that's when Lando was looking for it. Lando, he, who held onto the card all that time. Right. right. Lando was the one who was probably building it up to get the most out of Han. Mm. He was going to let it get all right. as far as it would go, and then coup de gras. Yeah. Um, and so that's when he's he's one up and one upping his gamesmanship. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he wins the Millennium Falcon. That's he does. Well, how he, he got the first Millennium he, Falcon. He says, oh, "You got everything you need there, pal." <laughs> yeah. Um, which is a good kind of knowing. And and from what I understand, Lando's hand isn't bad either. 
He's got, it's not like, it's not a guaranteed win, but it's a pretty good hand. Yeah. It's, and, uh, he tries to bluff it. He tries to be, uh, you know, confident and stuff. Right. And so, but he's like, oh, you got everything you need there, pal? Because he knows what. Yeah. He knows. what the, Yeah, he knows. Yeah. And I, I thought, interestingly, um, the way that, maybe it's the way that it's shot. Maybe this was, I can't, I don't know where in the shooting this, this scene happened, but. I find Alden Ehrenreich is looking his most like Hans, like Harrison Ford, Empire Strikes Back, Harrison Ford, Han Solo here huh. with, the, with the jacket and like the way that he's lit. Because I like I think the lighting changes depending on his eye, the shadow of his eye sockets essentially changes the shape of his face. And there's certain shots huh. throughout the movie that I feel like he looks more like Harrison Ford, Han Solo. Oh. And I think that the the shot where he's at the table, he's across the table from uh, Lando. Yeah. He looks a lot like Empire Han. Yeah, I was just scrubbing through and actually when he holds up the card, like mm-hmm. the reveal, like, are you looking for this? Or it would be nice if you had this. He looks an awfully lot like Harrison yeah. Ford. Do you think this is just a lighting thing or do you think they use some kind of CGI? Is it like a, <laughs> they, or is it like prosthetics? Did they put prosthetics mm. on it to make him look, <laughs> now that he's the closest we'll ever see to being <laughs> Harrison he's, Ford? If you look closely, he's actually wearing like a, like a, like a vacuum formed plastic Han Solo mask <laughs> and a, a vinyl smock that says Han Solo on it. <laughs> yeah. From Halloween spirit. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and playing the Han Solo card game. So it's yeah, perfect. There you go. So, uh, <laughs> Um, and then, well, so he does. He says the line. He says "fair and square," which we, as we know, comes back. That's you know, that's when hey, you lost her to me, fair and square. Remember? You know, I didn't even piece that together until you just pointed it out just now. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, so, that's uh, why it's back like that. Um, and you, to make it even worse, I think that is a an overdub. Well, obvi- it's, obviously, it's an overdub because it's off camera you know it's, it's voice over it's off camera and you're not seeing yeah. him say it but it seems like an add-in like after the fact it, it sounds like from a completely different recording session that is just oh, like it fair and square huh like like totally different <laughs> um and so it, it it seemed that seemed extra kind of egregious to me yeah that it was like all right we really need to have him say this so because it comes back, you know, it's a callback that we need it to be in there. So let's call him back in to have him ADR that after the fact. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and then they go, uh, they leave. Well, wait, wait, wait. Did you guys, sorry, I had a, uh, if, a Lando if you're comment? watching this on video, you may have uh, noticed we have a special visitor here. Um, did you guys talk about his shirt? Who's Lando's? Yes. Um, uh, only we did about last week, but okay. if you have a comment on it, go I ahead. just love I love you, this shirt. <laughs> yeah, like, are I you, feel do like, you feel like you have more insight on the shirt than Stuart Wellington? Oh God, no. <laughs> well, I mean, it is kind of a stew shirt, but also I think you, what 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 do you? Uh, well, what is it? It's a sailboat, a skiff, a sunset. I feel like it's some kind of. Uh, it, I thought it was like a winged creature. I think it's a sailboat. It's 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 some kind of a ship. It's a vessel. It's like a it's like a a ship in paradise, mm. and he's losing his ship mm. in this moment. Oh, oh, he's losing his shirt too. No, <laughs> he's, yeah, losing he's losing it shirt. all. <laughs> and because the shirt, the ship is on the shirt. Yeah, the I ship l- is on the shirt. I looked it up, and it's kind of an abstract thing, so it's mm. hard to tell what. Exactly, mm. it oh. is. It's kind of like it does look a little bit like, yeah. I can't tell if it's a ship or like some kind of. Well, first of all, it's two suns, which is very Tatooine esque, right? Yeah, and then um, it almost looks like it. First, I thought it was you know that thing in the the heavy metal cartoon where the right, yeah that guy's Hard riding time. that bird creature around. That's what I thought it was something like. That's why I thought it was a winged creature. But it's kind of just a more abst. I can't tell if it's a ship or mm. a creature or what. But uh, a ship, a cup, a speeder. Yes. <laughs> Um, I sense a lot of fear in you. It does, yeah. It almost seems like the original, the concept art for the like the Beldons for the what what uh, Bespin was supposed to be like, which would tie in mm. full circle. But it's, it is a very snazzy shirt, though. Yeah, it's a snazzy so, shirt uh, mm-hmm. with yeah. the with the the scarf and the whole deal. You know that. Yeah, his outfit is is impeccable. His outfits Always. in general throughout this are nice. Yes, general. Mm. I also really liked. Um, they have these really nice sort of 
stoneware clay cups and mugs on the table, mm. uh, which I am quite fond of. And so I noticed those and appreciated them. Mm. Stoneware. I like that. Stoneware. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Now, uh, I understand, uh, Ella, that you literally just finished rewatching the movie right before uh, we were recording. That is why we were recording later than we scheduled to record. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Do you have any um, feelings on the matter? Any any overall <laughs> thoughts on the movie? How did you enjoy it? Well, it was the first time I had watched it since we saw it in the theater. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember being pretty pumped after seeing it in the theater. I really li love it. Lando. I love Donald Glover. I mm -hmm. loved uh, just that the robot rebellion and resistance was uh, a thread. Mm -hmm. um, and this time watching it, it was a little bit, <laughs> it could have been context. Like I was rushing to watch it. Uh, I had been out with kids all day doing errands and fun things like swimming. And, and mm -hmm. I knew that I had to like get back with two hours to watch this movie and feed them. And so I was doing all that at once and trying to like think and be, uh, you know, suck in whatever I could, like, like have some kind of revelation. And I, I think I was trying too hard. And as a result, I, I felt a little bit like, when is this movie going to end? Except for <laughs> any time Donald Glover was on the screen. <laughs> oh, where else? You're, you're that yeah. big of a Glover head that you're... Yeah. Like, it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was kind of like I just... I, I didn't remember everything that I loved about him, but I just... I, I was anticipating loving things about him. Right. So, yeah. And I, I, uh, I, we, I watched it with the kids, and so that was kind of fun. They had a... They had a they yep. actually were were quite bored for the first half of it. <laughs> Hard to see <sing> anything. <laughs> yeah, they, it's it seemed to pick up for them around uh, around the time they were uh, the 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 jailbreak at the spice mines were, was happening. Oh right, yes. When yeah. I, once I got home, and then they yeah <laughs> yeah right around then they caught the vibe. Yeah, they didn't care for making out in the capes. No. They were just talking about the capes a lot and right asking a lot of questions about or actually they were often reassuring one another that like han would be okay or lando would be okay because they knew that they would show mm -hmm. up in later movies oh that's nice now do you remember i think we we, we see this in the theater first and then went to the drive-in to go see it or do we see it for the first time at the drive-in and then see it i think, I think we saw it in the theater and then we saw it at a drive-in right so this is not the first time i've seen it since i saw it in the theater this well, is the first time i've seen it I mean, since we that, saw it at the, the drive-in drive counts as a theater <laughs> yeah first time indoors since you yes. saw it in the theater oh unless you sat in your car i guess then that would count as indoors but we know we, we sat yeah. out on a little bump yeah uh on a blanket <laughs> a um a grassy dole right so they had they the kids have seen it before mm -hmm. but not in a while since it came, since it was out in theaters, so that's what four years ago. I'm sure they don't remember it. Did they have yeah. any problem uh, accepting Alden Ehrenreich as Han Solo? Um, no, they didn't. I just said that's Han Solo, and they were fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with that. They said sometimes the lighting makes it look like Han Solo. That's what they <laughs> yeah. <were> like, <laughs> especially in that last two minutes of the film. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, we cut. We did to say. Oh, At one point, one of them said, I, I wish I had a bed made of Wookiee fur. And mm. I think it was because someone else talked about Wookiee fur being Rio. soft. Rio talked uh -huh. about snuggling <laughs> up in the, you, you get the best sleep of your life snuggled up in the lap of a Wookiee or something like that. Yeah. I, uh, I can't, th that doesn't seem like it would be good. Either, the, either you skinned a Wookiee and you're living on its fur, or it's just like hair that fell off a Wookiee and they compiled mm. it. You know, or human you hair is great when it's on someone's head. And then as soon as it leaves someone's head, it's like, oh, the most disgusting <laughs> thing you can have. So, right. Like you could have shaved a Wookiee. Oh, maybe they donate it. Like, uh, or, yeah. you know, right. Yeah. And or I, I assume it factory would be farms like and <laughs> encased inside some kind of a covering. So, like a mattress made of Wookiee fur, not oh, just okay. a pile of Wookiee fur. Mm. Okay. I was thinking more like a bearskin rug, I guess. So, yeah, yeah. I could see it being. Uh, yeah. Well, I just All wanted right. to paraphrase Qui Gon. Like, Perhaps I skinned a Wookiee and took it from him or something <laughs> like that. <you> know? <laughs> oh, poor Wookiees. Haven't they suffered enough? Hmm. Um, but yeah, to Han and the Wookiee, they're, they're taking off, they're in the Falcon flying off and they're they're headed to Tatooine Beckett heard about a very big gangster and I was like this could huh. be a 
that could be a, a, a pun kind of, right? Uh, oh, there's a big gangster putting together a crew and they get mm. there and there's Jabba the Hutt. And it's like, oh, he's yeah. a big gang. Okay, okay. Um, I, um, I'm on record as not liking Jabba the Hutt being the king of Tatooine in The Phantom mm-hmm. Menace, him being the kind of... I'm mm-hmm. just, So... Um, Anyway, it's 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 because this makes well, him sound like now he's a much smaller fry. Maybe he had his ups and downs in his career. Maybe at one point he was powerful. No, I think he's then, both. You know, it's the way that uh, you know, uh, um, like a mob boss would be a, a fetid, not fetid like a swamp, fetid like like celebrated, <laughs> um, fetid cheese, celebrated you know celebrity presence at uh, events in a yeah. town run by the mob, if, if that existed, um, but similar kind of thing where it's like you know his his that that area of Tatooine he's in charge of it but he's you know outside of that it's not like people would know him that well it's you know he's just the boss of that area a territory yeah, yeah. um and then uh, chewy you know han's like all right great we're going to Tatooine because i got this line you know beckett's heard of this uh had this thing on this this very big gangster and Chewie's just kind of like and I think he's just like I want to go home I'm still looking for my family <laughs> yeah come on <laughs> what happened here can we just yeah I was a prisoner um, Chewie needs to speak up for himself yeah I think well he the is thing. but but Maybe Han is just not yeah. yeah yeah Han's not listening Han's doing the like what was that I don't you know it's I, yeah. I didn't quite catch that I think you said let's go it's like yeah let's go home <laughs> yeah let's go great <laughs> I didn't catch the last word, but let's go. Here we go. Yeah. Tatooine. <laughs> I mean, it's exciting. All this switch flipping is is really lovely. Some yeah. nice satiny swi- switches and satiny doodads switches. being flicked around on this uh, control mm. panel here. And it's like the first time that he's flying the ship and it belongs to him legally, fair and square. So, right. yeah. you know, it's, a, it's an exciting moment, an exciting half minute. It is, it's, but it's also like where this is like where we had to get to in a sense. Like it's also like, like a like a foregone conclusion that we are getting here. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's exciting, but not necessarily surprising. That's just like satisfying. Okay, well, satisfying. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, it's what you would. Ex- yeah, and then Han says, hey, "Hey, when have I ever steered you wrong? Because right. we've been on so many adventures together. Come on, one more <laughs> right. time." All right, I guess my family can wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait. Uh, but he's right, though. I mean, so far, so good. They've they've had a good run of it. Yeah, that's true. Um, and he's steering. Right. Ah, uh, I see. That, there's a lot of double puns in this one. Big yeah. gangster. So when I ever steered you wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Lando, so Lando fixed up the ship and everything, and he uh, that makes it extra sad for Lando. Is that oh, was the ship it? was a? I thought well, it was. I don't know. Let me. I didn't. I there's didn't a little look. like he has to flick the screen at one point, but other than that, it seems to be in yeah, very looks, good working order. But is the outside looks, of it looking? Uh, well, when you see it taking oh. off and stuff, you see it kind of. It looks. It looks okay to me. Hmm. Yeah, it looks good. Looking hmm. good. I have to go look. So that must be uh, more heartbreaking for Lando that he just finished, just oh, finished oh, paying nope, it off. Nope, It still needs some body work, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's that dark cinematography threw me off. Right. It was so dark. I have to say, we were watching it oh, yeah. like Parts on a projector in, um, you know, daylight hours, and we had all the windows covered with dark cloths, but it was very yeah. hard to see a good, good, good chunk of this film that opening third especially is yeah is... <laughs> i think that's what lost the kids they were like i can't see what's going on <laughs> there's one scene where kira throws the rock through the window and blasts like light sunlight on uh, lady proxima uh-huh. that was like all we saw for the first 25 minutes of the film <laughs> well at the drive-in too because it was not quite yeah. dark out so a similar yeah. kind of vibe the worst uh, the worst worst movie to see in a drive-in <laughs> Um, well, that was all I had for 126. It kind of continues. We get a little bit of the end of them flying off uh, Oh, tomorrow. actually, I have a question okay. as I'm scrubbing through here. Sure. So you see the Falcon taking off mm-hmm. and you see the planet behind them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's just a completely constructed planet. Like there are so many rivers. This is not a this is not like a they didn't use a 
photo of Earth from space and then painted a more teal color, right? This that probably, probably would have that would have confused a lot of people <laughs> if they were taking off from Earth, Earth at the end of the movie. <laughs> well, like it just looks like such a beautiful like spot that they're leaving from. Yeah. So yeah, it lush. is. Um, well, I wrote it down somewhere. Do, do they? Ident- they don't identify it in the movie, right? Um, they. Do but they don't. Crypto. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's like unidentified tropical, subtropical moon or something like. No, no, wait. Mm. No, that's where. He, that's. Hmm. The Lando talks about owning a subtropical moon. Hmm. But maybe this is it. I mean, uh, yeah. No, it's these... not. That's the. Uh. This is an unconnected subtropical moon that he happens to be visiting (laughs) at the same time. A U U S T M. (laughs) He mentioned one and then it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's see. Um, Jungle Outpost on Numidian Prime. Oh, Numidian Prime, which is that's this beautiful planet. Um, It's it's in the it's the Numidian system in the bright jewel sector. Wow, of the yeah. mid-rim territories. That's some, that's some like good marketing. The, yeah. <laughs> the people who named it, the, uh, yeah. the what are the, the jewel system? The bright jewel <laughs> sector. Bright jewel sector, nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's located on the edge of the mid-rim. Uh, it's a warm and beautiful jungle planet, although it had swamp terrain also. Mm. Breathable atmosphere inhabited by species of birds. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what it looks like. It looks yeah. just like like these incredible natural waterways all kind of intersecting, just, crisscrossing the land. Yeah. I want to go to there. Um, just birds? <laughs> and, and Lando and his friends. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what that thing on the on his shirt is supposed to be, like a kind of symbolic bird. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those thing. are the local birds of yeah. Numidian Prime. The famous jewel sector birds <laughs> yeah. of Numidian Prime. Come for the birds. Stay for the right. legalized gambling. <laughs> Uh, the, the card game Sabak or Han Solo card game has a set of rules based on Numidian Prime. So there's a special like Numidian rules of uh-huh. Sabak. Variation. And yeah. uh, Lando once held a winning hand according to them. Not, that's not this <laughs> once. story. Just apparently. once. <laughs> once. <laughs> once, but he bet the whole Falcon. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Um, really counting on that wrist shooter, web slinger. Oh, the name <laughs> Numidian Prime appeared for the first time in the reference book. Solo, the official Solo Star Wars story, the official guide, huh. written by Pablo Hidalgo. Oh, hey! <laughs> Coincidence. Uh, right that was the name appeared in that, but it was not connected to the planet seen in Solo until the release of the novelization Solo Star Wars Story uh, Expanded Edition uh, and the Junior novelization. Um, so they mentioned Numidian. Wait, Prime. it appeared in the novelization of Junior. Why would it? Why would it be in the novelization of Junior? It, it was a weird tie-in. They tried to. It was Doritos. <laughs> something about Doritos. <laughs> It's not a Tuma. That's all I have for minute number 126. Same here. Ella, did you have anything else? We we can do some uh, more general, uh, like I said, it, we kind of end the movie tomorrow, so we can do some more general solo talk tomorrow if you want. But if you have anything specific to this or Sabak or... I mean, just Lando. I just wrote love cups, belt buckles, Psylop. Ooh, he has a nice gold bar necklace, love mm-hmm. shirt, and something I can't read and satiny switches on the Falcon. Mm-hmm. That's all I have to say. Satiny <laughs> switches. The satiny switches. Satiny switches, Batman. <laughs> all right. Well, if you can, we'd love to have you back again tomorrow. Um, and uh, listeners, viewers, um, we'd love to have you back tomorrow. In the meantime, why not go? Uh, let's find us on social media. How about that? We are uh, uh, at uh, Twitter at Star Wars Minute, Instagram the Star Wars Minute, the Star Wars Minute Listener Society on Facebook is at Star Wars Minute slash Facebook. The Star Wars Minute subreddit on Reddit is uh, r Star Wars Minute, and um, there's a TikTok, but uh, don't bother going. There's not much there. We posted, I think, two things: like one thing with Josh Flanagan and one thing with Radke, maybe. Um, but I'm not sure. But maybe, maybe I'll have some time and post some other stuff uh, there soon. Uh, and the only way to find out is by going there and then come back and meet us here tomorrow on a brand new Star Wars Minute. Star Wars, Star Wars Minute! Minute.